Today I'll go about showing you around the Sologeny orchids and what to look out for to help you identify if you have one. They're one of the more popular orchids because they're so easy to grow and their flowers are often beautifully scented. So let's have a look at them and help you decide. And welcome to the Nature Company. If this is the kind of information you're interested in, please hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already and that notification bell to be notified of all our upcoming videos so you don't miss out on a thing. The Sologeny Alliance seems to be a lot smaller alliance of different genera. They also seem to be more closely related and look more similar than what some of the other alliances are. So let's have a look into it and we'll go through it and show you what we need to look out for. So let's start with one step that's made it easier. All these amazing dendrochilums that we all had or all have in our collections are no longer dendrochilums. They are sologeny. So it just makes this category one step smaller again. So let's look at what the trends are that keep these all together. So first having a look at the pseudobulbs all the pseudobulbs are basically ovate in nature and not only that you'll notice they're all generally ribbed in some fashion some more obviously than others So looking at these pseudobulbs, the Sologeny flacida, which is probably your most common Sologeny I found around, you'll notice that the rhizome connecting the pseudobulbs is not incredibly long, but it still allows the bulbs to extend outwards and hang down. Other Sologenies, much shorter rhizomes that give this more clumping mounding habit and then others have much longer rhizomes this is Sologeny ovalis not only is this slightly different in the fact of its longer rhizome it also has a single flower as opposed to the the long hanging panicles that a lot of the other Sologenies have and are well known for. Also along with these ribbed pseudobulbs we get these pleated leaves. Although it's not as obvious here but you can see these pleated markings in them. Even in the dendrochilums, or now Sologenies, you can still see there is that pleating involved amongst the leaves. Also the Sologeny flacida, we can see it quite clearly, especially when there's light shining on the leaves. And these leaves will generally come either singly or in pairs at the end of the pseudobulbs. They often also another distinctive feature about the Sologeny's leaves is the fact that they're so thin. They're very flexible. They're not just going to snap and break or crack like a cattleya's would. They almost come across like any normal other plant's leaves. And they have no water storage capacities. That's all left to those big plump pseudobulbs. And the colors that they come in is generally from this bright light green all the way through the mid greens and then to those beautiful deep dark forest greens. So in the color variations of your leaves with your Sologenies, you're gonna get these beautiful bright green light colored leaves from your Sologeny filiformis through your mid greens and they're still fairly bright. Your Sologeny tementosa, and then you start getting to the darker side with your Sologeny dianas and even your ovalis 
and then we start getting to those beautiful deep rich forest greens it's like your unchained melody and of course your Selogeny Flacida. They are, they are often petiolar, meaning they've got this petiole that leads from the pseudobulb to the leaf itself. And these are often ribbed themselves. So here again, these pleated leaves onto a petiole to the pseudobulb. There are varieties, again, which are sessile, which means the leaf doesn't have a petiole, the leaf attached directly to the pseudobulb. But you'll also notice, even with these, how narrow the leaf becomes when it reaches the pseudobulb. So you get this distinct shape in the leaves. So here we see with this, what used to be a dendrochillum, just with a single leaf. And these ones with the double leaves. So you'll either have the one or two leaves on your cylogeny. The roots are also fine hair-like roots that come out of the base of the pseudobulbs, which makes them fairly susceptible to, to rot if kept too wet. The size difference we also get in them is all the way from these tiny little ones where the whole plant is almost smaller than a single leaf of some of the others. We also get these very, very compact growers with the very widely spaced growers. So in that is where the biggest variation comes. But other than that, looking closely, it's pretty easy to tell that they are all related to each other. So in looking at Cylogenes, we see there is quite a distinctive look to them. So they should be relatively easy to identify. And their form is actually quite beautiful just by itself, not to mention the amazing flowers that they get. So you should actually try and get one of these in your collection because there's varieties that will grow from warm conditions all the way through to cold conditions. So these are some of my most rewarding orchids. As the fine mist rain starts coming down, it's time for me to head indoors. It's good for the orchids, but not good for my hair. So thanks for watching. And if you have found any of this information helpful, please hit that like button. Subscribe down below if you haven't already and hit that notification bell. Bing bong to be notified of all our upcoming content so you don't miss out on a thing. Help us grow as we help your plants grow.